Hey guys, NES Complex here. On this episode, we're going to be talking about... On this episode, I'm going to be talking about Heavy Barrel! There are thousands of classic games, and just as many ways of rating them. But if you love retro games as much as I do, and just want to know if a game is worth playing, then only one question need be answered. Data East's Heavy Barrel was released in the arcades in 1987. By 1990, it had collected enough quarters and earned enough respect to be ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System. But how is it? And more importantly, is it fun? Heavy Barrel, the ultimate weapon that will blow you away. So says the back of the box. The impossible and unthinkable has happened. Terrorists have seized the underground control complex of a nuclear missile site. It's up to you to infiltrate the installation and eliminate the leader of the terrorist's army. Right. It's basically every 80s action cliche, but it's pretty compelling and it makes me want to play it. Except this sentence. Powerful tanks, treacherous waterways, and the bridges are all part of enemy territory now? It makes it seem like the tanks are territory. And I mean, there probably should be a comma here, and I'm not sure about the word the before bridges, but you know, I think I kind of digress here. Heavy Barrel plays as a typical run and gun, but it has just enough uniqueness to set it apart. You play as this guy, <coughs> and player two is this guy. <coughs> you move and aim nameless red guy with the D-pad, and he's an agile sucker considering he has no knee joints. The A button fires your primary weapon while B uses secondary ones like grenades. It's kinda clunky at first, but you get used to it pretty quickly. So what sets this run and gun apart from every other? Well, when you kill red terrorists, they drop... thermometers? Actually, they're supposed to be keys. And keys let you open the lockers, randomly scattered all over the place. You know, just like in real-world nuclear missile control complexes. Lockers contain weapons, ammo, and most importantly, pieces of heavy barrel. The weapons, like grenades, super grenades, smoke bombs, the mace, the star shield, the laser gun, the spread shotting pellet gun, and the flamethrower are fun enough, but it's all about the titular heavy barrel. Yeah! Apparently, before the terrorists took over the installation, a clever technician dismantled heavy barrel and hid the six pieces in random storage lockers. I'm sure he was smugly satisfied that the terrorists would never figure that out. The terrorists will never figure that out. Finding keys and opening the correct lockers assembles Heavy Barrel and gives you 99 seconds of carnage. In terms of difficulty, Heavy Barrel is inconsistent. Some parts are laughably easy. and others are darn near impossible. And with only a handful of lives and continues, it can be pretty rage-inducing. On the bright side, it's pretty short, so once you get the patterns down, you can beat it in about half an hour. There are six levels, or perimeters, and the booklet flat out tells you the second perimeter won't be any fun. They have cool names like the Quarry, the Maze, and the Abyss. But in reality, they all kind of blend together. And unless you're a human of the heavy barrel-obsessed variety, you'd be hard-pressed to know the difference between one environment and another. In general, the graphics are decent, but the sprites are often floaty and jittery, breaking the illusion that you or the enemies actually physically inhabit this world. At times, the screen clutters with bullets, enemies, and action, and it becomes a sputtering, flickery nightmare. Ideally, environments would be graphically distinct and the music would complement the aesthetics to help transport you there. Not so in Heavy Barrel. Don't get me wrong, the music is fantastic, keeping the game at action pace, but ultimately it doesn't blend well with the environments. In fact, I listened to each level over and over trying to decide if they were actually different tracks. There actually are two different level tracks, but they're haphazardly mixed across the six levels. It's so confusing. Sound effects are basically forgettable.
And with anticlimactic boss explosions, it seems developers forgot them too. Other effects are present just enough to keep things interesting, with one heavy exception. The blast from the heavy barrel itself is unforgettably cool. Just kidding. It actually sounds heavy. Like a heavy barrel. Perhaps the best aspect of heavy barrel is playing together. Stealing keys and power-ups, helping each other out, splitting the kill load by taking and defending half the screen, and of course, the smack talk. You suck, Blue. Yeah, nice mustache, Ron Swanson. So what's Heavy Barrel so full of that makes it so heavy? Is it full of fun? Or is it full of sh It's full of fun. You might think with all the criticism I've thrown at this game with the lack of level variety, musical variety, and the jittery graphics that I wouldn't like this game at all. But Heavy Barrel has it where it counts. Non-stop action, a fun arsenal of weapons with unique properties and strengths, couch co-op, and simple arcadey fun. If you like running guns like Guerrilla War, POW, or Contra, then Heavy Barrel is worth a look. Thanks for watching.